Thank you. And the last new feature to iOS is called Clean Energy Charging. This is a new feature that will help reduce your carbon footprint by allowing your phone to intelligently charge when it detects that your power grid is being powered by low carbon emission energy. Hey, now you wait just a damn minute. Um, sir, we don't really do questions here. What happens if we ain't charging our phones on clean power? Well, in that situation, it would reduce the charging speed or stop, but your iPhone will use the same data that it already uses about your routine for optimized charging to make sure that when you need to use your phone, it will be charged. Hope y'all hear that. Apple's reducing the charging speeds of our phones. I'm a guess. Make sure that we upgrade our phones because we think our current ones are just too old and too slow. Money grubbing bastards. What? Of course you don't. No, sir. This is a feature that's coming to all currently supported iPhones, including the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro, the newest iPhones on the market. What is there to upgrade to? Hear that? Apple's reducing the charging speed of every iPhone. I knew it was time to switch to Samsung. Y'all don't care about nothing but yourselves and money. This feature is literally implemented to help reduce your carbon footprint. It's better for the environment. And besides, it's an option. You can turn it off if you want. What'd you say? What? What did you say? You can turn it off when you want. That's what I thought. Y'all hear that? It's already on after the update, and we ain't got a choice about it! You can literally choose to turn it off. My phone, my choice. Oh my god. Don't you dare use his name in vain, you hoity-toity rich little scam artist. Okay, sir, what do you suggest we do to help the environment? Oh, hell, I don't care about the environment. I just don't think y'all should be turning that on without giving us a choice and slowing our phones down so that way we upgrade soon. Okay, you know what? Hey, would you hey just interrupting here at the start because I wanted to say if you all like those sketches I'm putting at the beginning of videos, I'm going to try to do a few more of those. But if you like them, maybe like the video. If you want to see more of them, maybe subscribe. But leave some comments down below as well because I'm thinking about doing more of those. They're a ton of fun. But anyway, moving on. Huge thanks to Exter for partnering with me for a portion of this video. Hey, so y'all hear about how Apple is just reducing the charging speed of your iPhone for no reason? Yeah, me neither, because there's more behind it. And while I normally don't post videos on Fridays, I'm doing it now because I already have a video planned for Monday, but we're talking about this today. We're talking about the new clean energy charging feature for the iPhone. Let's dive in. So yeah, like my video title implies, Apple is reducing the charging speed of your phone. Kind of. See, I put kind of in parentheses because there's more to the story, but there's a lot of articles and videos out there on YouTube that aren't putting that kind of, and they're just kind of saying Apple is reducing the charging speed of your phone. And for people like me who don't read articles because I'm not 70 years old, I see that and I kind of say either there's more to the story or that's really crappy of Apple. And I tend to read the article after that when I see something that ridiculous, but most people see that and just go, oh, okay, well, that's stupid. Now, for those of you who aren't aware of what I'm talking about, there's a new feature on the latest version of iOS called Clean Energy Charging, and it was introduced with this version and it's on by default. Now, I'm gonna just read you what the description is of it, then we're gonna dive into the meat and potatoes of my opinion and why I think some of these articles are just absolutely ridiculous. Clean energy charging. In your region, iPhone will try to reduce your carbon footprint by selectively charging when lower carbon emission electricity is available. iPhone learns your daily charging routine so it can reach full charge before you need to use it. That's the, that's the whole description on this feature. And yes, I did say it was on by default. However, you can turn it off if you're not interested in it. That's fine. However, just keep watching this video until we get towards the end and make an informed decision because a lot of these articles that I'm reading and a lot of these YouTube videos I'm seeing are saying just turn it off because it's dumb and don't do it. Let's talk context here for a minute. Essentially, what Apple's saying with this description is that if your iPhone detects that it's on a power grid that's running off of renewable energy like wind or hydroelectric or solar, it will charge normally, presumably. It'll just use the same settings you already have in the battery. But if it detects that you're running on something like a fossil fuel powered power grid, it will reduce the charging speed or suspend charging when you don't need the phone and it's just running its normal power charging cycle. Now they mentioned the reduction in the carbon footprint and a lot of people are saying that one iPhone, pff, this is ridiculous, who cares about your carbon footprint? What's an iPhone gonna do to affect your carbon footprint? Which is true. I really don't think that one switch being flipped on my personal iPhone 
is really going to change my carbon footprint, especially considering that I'm a big car guy. I like cars that run on dinosaur and corn juice. So yeah, I'm not EV, probably never will be. So I don't think my carbon footprint's really changing by changing a setting on my iPhone. However, there are millions upon millions of iPhones out in the world. And by introducing this feature, that has a much bigger effect overall. That's something that I don't see a lot of people mentioning in these videos or these articles. In fact, I've seen a lot of people kind of pointing out the fact that when Apple is talking about saving the planet and, you know, reducing your carbon footprint, it's kind of contradictory because Apple is not including a charger in the box. So you then have to go buy a charger, which means you got to drive to the store, which pollutes the environment. And then you have to buy a new charger, which I saw somebody say means you're buying e-waste, which doesn't make sense to me because I don't think e-waste is something that you actively use. Here's my counter to that. Like I said, there are millions of iPhones in the world, right? And of those millions of iPhones, the users of those millions of iPhones probably have used iPhones before, right? Come here. I don't know about you, but anytime I open a random junk drawer or grab a jacket I haven't worn in a while or open the glove box in my car, I find a lightning cable and sometimes I even find a charger with it. And I have so many chargers because I went from one iPhone to another and I am one of many people who does that. And I don't know if these people are aware, these people making this video, but when I upgrade my iPhone, I don't immediately throw my power brick into the wood chipper and cut my power cord in half with a set of scissors. I actually keep them. And because lightning is lightning is lightning, it's stupid, I don't like lightning, but because Apple still uses lightning, I can just reuse that same charger. Just, just saying. Anyway, I personally think that the idea of this affecting your personal carbon footprint is a little overzealous. If anything, I think it's kind of ridiculous. However, with it being introduced on a mass scale, that could see a bigger effect. And I think that's kind of cool. But now let's talk about the big focus of these articles and YouTube videos, the selective charging, right? Apple is reducing your charging speed arbitrarily. Yeah, arbitrarily. There's no rhyme or reason to it other than you're not on renewable energy, even though if you really are concerned about that, you can opt out. But yeah, they're reducing your charging speed. Well, yes, but there's a rhyme to the reason. One of the things that I have not seen addressed in any of the YouTube videos I've watched and have only seen addressed in one article I've read is the second part of the description that Apple put, which is that your iPhone will learn your charging routines so the phone is fully charged when you need it. This is actually something that's been on the iPhone for a little while now. There's a feature that's already been on your iPhone for a while now called optimized charging. And the way this works is that it reads the data of when you get up in the morning and take it off the charger and when you plug it in in the evening. And it calculates that time and figures, okay, we don't need to blast the phone all the way up to 100% at full speed because it's gonna be fully charged by 2 a.m. And this person's going to bed at, let's say 11. Well, they're not gonna use their phone from 11 to six, let's say. So what it'll do is it will charge the phone up to about 70-ish, 80-ish percent and just hold it there because that's healthier for the battery. And then an hour or so before you need to wake up, it will turn the charge back up and run the phone up to 100%. That's actually really cool. It's great for the health of the battery. It means that your phone is fully charged when you need it to be, but it's also not going to affect your day-to-day -day use because it's doing it when you're not using the phone. From what I understand, at least from what I've been able to look up, the selective charging that Apple's talking about in this new feature is kind of similar to the optimized charging function where it learns your routines of charging. Because most people, unless you're one of those people who's at like 5% battery by two in the afternoon, you know who you are. Most people are charging their phones on their car ride, which I don't think you would really, I don't think that would actually count as low carbon, ironically enough, because it's charging off of an alternator or your car's battery, but whatever. Uh, unless you're charging it on the car ride or you charge it in the office, most people are charging their phones in the evening before they go to bed or while they're in bed asleep, not using their phones. And so it would make sense that just like the optimized charging function, Apple would reduce the charging speed of your phone, only ramping it up when you are about an hour out from needing your phone. Because I personally wake up at six every morning 
and you can see in my battery graph when the charging stops and when it starts again and then when I take it off the charger. That would make the most sense in terms of how Apple would implement this feature because instead of drawing the metrics of you know your time asleep and the battery percentage, it's just drawing the metrics of your time asleep, the power grid that you're on, and how quickly it should charge on that power grid to still make it to 100% by the time you wake up in the morning. It's not gonna affect your use case unless your charging schedule is so erratic, and in which case I think maybe put your phone down, stop watching YouTube all day. Not this video, watch this video through to the end because this is gonna teach you something, but yeah, maybe put the phone down a little bit so you can sleep through the night and then have your phone fully charged and ready by the next day. I personally am gonna leave it on. I think it is a very cool feature and I think that as an iPhone user and one of millions of iPhone users, this is actually a pretty big win for the environment. And no, I don't subscribe to the idea that Apple is arbitrarily reducing the speed of your phone's charging for no reason whatsoever. I think there's logic behind it. I think that the idea of a improvement to charging your phone and keeping track of your carbon footprint on mass is a really good idea. And in general, I think that if you wanna turn it off, the fact they made it an option is great, but most people should probably leave it on. Just like most people, scratch that, everybody should check out Exter, who partnered with me for today's video. Exter makes some pretty epic wallets. I've been daily driving their aluminum ones since the last time they partnered with me for a video. I still love the trigger on the side that pops all your cards up for easy access. It's the ultimate fidget toy in your pocket, and it fits in my pocket super well, but the leather one they sent me also fits pretty well, but also accommodates more cards if you're the kind of person who has, you know, every partner card ever from every store. Both the leather and the aluminum wallet they sent me have AirTag holders, so if you use an AirTag, you can pop one right in there and track your wallet down in the case that you lose it. But in the case that you're not an AirTag user, you can get one of the wallets that doesn't have an AirTag holder and still not worry about losing your wallet because they do make trackers for your wallet. Don't be weird. They've got wallets made of leather, aluminum, my personal favorite, and carbon fiber, which looks sexy as hell. So if you're interested in any of the stuff I just showed you, you can check out the link down below. It's shop.extra.com slash Garrett Crespo and use the code Garrett to save up to 25% off on your purchase. And they're also running that special because it's their anniversary running out all the way until next month on the 24th. Thanks again to Exter for partnering with me for this portion of the video. Now back to the charging fiasco. But now that we've covered why I think these articles are stupid and what I actually think of this feature, let me talk real quick about why I think this whole thing blew up the way it did. It's because Apple made it about the environment. And whether you like it or not, at least here in the US, which seems to be the region that this is being first introduced at, bringing up the environment immediately means that it's political. Now, I avoid politics on this channel like the plague because it's just an easy way to cut your audience in half. And honestly, when it comes to the environment, I don't fall on either side. I think that the environment is something we need to take care of, but as I mentioned earlier, I am a huge car guy and not a big fan of electric cars. I like cars that run on corn juice and dinosaur juice, and it's gonna stay that way for a while. But things like e-fuel seem kind of cool and could help the environment, which I care about. And also, I'm not gonna just actively go out and throw in the road and litter, which, you know, do your part. But no, all jokes aside, I do care about the environment, but I also have my preferences, my beliefs, we're not diving into that. My problem is that when Apple made it about the environment, these articles made it about politics. Because here's the thing, we saw this not too long ago when Microsoft introduced a new power off function for the Xbox Series X, and I think all the other Xboxes from that kind of model series. But essentially by introducing this lower power feature for the Xbox, it increased the boot up time of the Xbox. Whereas previously, if you had the quick power on mode, it was like a second or two to boot up. Now it's like five seconds. Holy crap. But because there was a discernible difference between the new carbon neutral low power version and the slightly less power efficient fast boot function, and because Microsoft made it about the environment, articles hopped on board and turned it into a bad thing talking about how the Xbox is now slower to boot up. And well, the same thing happened here. Apple made this new feature about the environment and people have their own agendas and make it into a bad thing. And in some ways, the articles just kind of write themselves. The example I gave to somebody to show them that making it about the environment immediately made it political for some people 
was by showing them how few people cared about the battery optimization function and how many people, my family, their iPhone, their family's iPhones, all had that optimized charge function turned on. And how many people actually cared about that? I'm willing to bet not many, because I know from my little sample size, nobody cared and it was just on. Because it came on by default when Apple updated it onto the iPhone. Just like this clean energy function, however, because this clean energy function does something similar, but bases it off of the carbon footprint and environmental statistics of your power grid, well, now it's a problem. Look. I'm of the personal belief that trying to tie politics in with technology is a fool's errand. No political system is ever going to be unified enough to agree on something. And one of the benefits of technology is options, choices, advancement in technology in ways that we could never have imagined. So trying to think that multiple countries with multiple systems based on tradition, modernism, socialism, communism, all coming together in some way to work with technology, it's gonna be a tool for them, sure, and that's fine, but tying your political beliefs in with the advancement of technology or tying it into something as minuscule as a flipped switch on a phone, it's kind of ridiculous. Technology is all about choice. You can choose to subscribe to different services. You can choose to use an iPhone, an Android phone, a Mac, a PC, Linux, you have so many choices in the same way that you have tons of political options. Just maybe don't get the two mixed because a lot of times the ties between the two you're trying to make probably don't exist and it'll just make you look stupider in the end. Like those articles. Anyway, that's been it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you really did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like. If you really, really liked it or maybe loved it, Think about subscribing. I'm doing a lot more stuff like this. Again, I don't usually post on Fridays. This is a bonus video, but hopefully you all enjoyed it. And I will see you all in the next video. Make sure to be there and have a good one.